Welcome everyone. Today we are going to learn different type of Wien's theorem and its forms in geometry. So whenever there are uh, difficult or intricate configurations in geometry, identifying unique configurations that we are already aware of helps us solve them. This is one of the best strategies I would say to employ on problem solving for higher math olympiads like INMO, RMO or even IMO. So let's get started. So we are first going to learn in the very trivial form Ring's theorem in a very trivial form. This is called the form 1 of it. Suppose I consider two circles that intersect each other at points A and B. And then I consider collinear points. Then I consider collinear points D, A and F such that D lies on the first circle, F lies on the second circle. And then I consider three collinear points E, B and G, such that E lies on the first circle and G lies on the second circle. Then it turns out the lines D, E and F, G, the lines D, E and F, G are parallel. So they are oriented in the same direction. How come they are parallel? The proof is quite simple. Suppose I consider the angle DEB and call it to be theta, then it is equal to angle DAB. By the angle subtended by arc DB is same throughout the other arc of the circle, we get angle DEB equal DAB. And then angle BAF is 180 minus theta. So this one is 180 minus theta. And therefore, the angle FGB would be theta as we know the angles in the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are supplementary. Therefore, we get angle FGB to be theta because FAB is 180 minus theta. It's simple now. So we get angle FGE equal to angle DEG equal to theta. This imply by the transverse angle like the alternate angles in the interior part of the lines DE and FG are equal. This means the line DE and FG are parallel. So this is the configuration. We have E here, G here, F here and D here. But the same form can occur in a different configuration. So you should be aware of both of such occurrences in order to identify them in intricate configurations. So let's draw the configuration two. This is one configuration in which you have the lines D and FG formed by the endpoints that are intersection through the uh, of lines through the intersection of the two underlying circles. Whereas here you could have the same property like D, A, F being collinear and E, B, G being collinear. But still you have D E parallel to F, G. You know the same proof might not hold in both of these configurations. A proof that is slightly varied would work. For example here D, E, B is not equal to D, A, B as they are on opposite sides of D, B. But it, uh, it is supplementary. Right, so if you have this as theta, then this would be 180 minus theta. This is theta, making this 180 minus theta. So you see that interior angles in the same side of parallel lines are supplementary, making them um, truly parallel. All right, let's go to the form two of Ring's theorem. Again, I have two circles intersecting at points A and B. Now I do not consider lines that are um, forming three collinear points. Rather, alternating lines are forming parallel lines. That is, AD is parallel to BG now, like this. And then you have BE parallel to AF. And in this form of Ream's theorem, it turns out that DE is parallel to FG again. Earlier, 
points D A F were collinear and E B G were collinear. And now the alternating lines A D and B G are parallel and A F and B E are parallel. So slightly shifting the focus of parallel lines and uh, collinear lines to parallel lines. So how to prove this? Well, the proof should not be difficult. In the same way, we are going to prove DE is parallel to FG by bit of angle chase. Suppose this is alpha and uh, it means that this angle will be 180 minus alpha. And suppose I wish to extend these two lines in order to intersect FG. So we get angle EBA to be 180 minus alpha. And since EB is parallel to AF, the angle BAF will be also 180 minus alpha. They are just alternate interior angles. Now if this BAF is 180 minus alpha, I know that AFGB is a cyclic quadrilateral and opposite angles are supplementary. So I get FGB to be alpha. Observe now that DA is parallel to BG and the angle here, the angle marked over here is just in the same side of alpha with respect to those two parallel lines. So that will be 180 minus alpha. So therefore, this angle will be 180 minus alpha and we observe that alpha and 180 minus alpha lie on the same side of two lines making them parallel. So we get DE parallel to FG as displayed because this is just extension of the line FG. So you get the formed line these two to be parallel. So now this is one possible configuration. There could be another configuration. This is just one configuration. The second one could be like this. Suppose this is my second possible configuration and the intersection points are A and B and I form AD here so BG will be here D and G and I have BE like this and AF like this so even here a similar approach in the proof works just extend FG so that you can intersect AD and BE and you can prove that by uh, two angles being equal or supplementary, the lines DE and GF are parallel. Alright, let's now move to the form 3 of it. Now it gets a bit more non-trivial. Now I have only one circle where you have the cyclic quadrilateral AB AD. And now we construct lines starting from A and B respectively, such that the angles made by them with AD and BE are equal respectively. And we construct up to a point, call it F, AF and B to G, such that DE is parallel to FG. Then it turns out F, A, B, G form concyclic points. So this is like a slight variation of form 2 or in other words the converse of form 2. Let's think about it. So we have to prove ABGF is cyclic. Again a bit of angle chase would do good for us. So here we have to consider angle DAF being equal to angle EBG in opposite order like in opposite orientation we must measure the two angles. Okay, suppose I extend DA to intersect FG at X and extend EB to intersect FG at Y. And let's call the angle at D to be alpha and at E to be beta. And, we, and I get angle at B to be alpha and angle at A to be beta. All right. Now I get the angle at x to be 180 minus alpha because DE and XY are parallel. So suppose if I think about this angle, then this will be DAF minus 180 degrees for this configuration. This is only for this configuration. If I vary, my argument will slightly vary. That's it. But still, 
let's stick to this configuration angle fax is theta similarly angle ybg is also theta and therefore if i find this angle it will be the angle at f will be 180 minus alpha minus theta because the sum of this one and theta should form the angle 180 minus alpha by exterior angle property of a triangle and hence the angle at f plus angle at b which is alpha plus theta adds up to 180 making it a cyclic quadrilateral this completes the proof that f a b g is cyclic so uh, the configuration possible for form 3 is not only this this is one possible configuration you could also have something like this d a b and e and then you make equal angles and form f and g such that d e and f g are parallel even in this case you should be able to identify that a b g f uh, is a cyclic quadrilateral So that's all about the Riemann theorem and their configurations. So whenever you encounter such beautiful configurations, be conscious and identify them to conclude that some two lines are parallel or some four points are concyclic. Thank you and all the best. Bye.